So that brings me to the edge. What is the edge? The edge is being defined as small compute, small memory, small power devices. Right? And this is always sort of a nebulous term because and with every passing year, we get more and more capable small devices. Right? And so the, the phone in my pocket currently is considered the, the edge, right? Um, and will continue to do so. But the phone, you know, that I can that I can pick up in two years from now may not currently have the specs that we would consider the edge because it's going to be a lot more powerful at that point, uh, hypothetically, right? So, so really, you just want to think about any device. The way I like to think about it is the device that's in the consumer's hand sort of allows the desktops to be you know, on the edge. And in some sense, they are. They're not in the cloud. Um, but the point is we're not using the cloud for compute. We can get access to machines with very large amounts of memory and compute out there relative to what we can get in our hands sitting right here. And that is the edge. Um, this is interesting because the number of edge devices over the next 10 years is expected to, um, to increase far faster than the number of say laptops and desktops and compute devices that are out there, right? And so this opens the potential for um, us to use that compute, but it also shows us where people are going to be doing their computing. So if you have some, some application that you want to run on a phone, one of the examples I like to use is called Picture This. You take a picture of any plant that you find, and it will try to tell you what that plant is. It will also try and go and diagnose the plant or the overwater. This, this can run on the phone, or it can run in the cloud, and you can access it via the internet, right? Um, which is sort of a standard approach to doing machine learning with edge devices. Uh, that leads to problems, however. Specifically, it takes a lot longer for that time of flight and for the computation to happen uh, if you're using the cloud versus if you're using the edge device. And you have the opposite problem with edge devices. Again, we're talking about low power, low compute, low memory. Devices. So fitting these models on there and getting the computation done efficiently can itself be a problem. And that's, that brings us to uh, the, the sort of libraries and, and hardware I want to talk about. Right? Um, there are a lot of libraries out there that are focusing now on doing machine learning and deep learning on the edge. TensorFlow Lite. Um, TensorFlow itself can be, can be ported, well, TensorFlow itself can actually be ported to a lot of microcontrollers you really run into memory issues at that point. And TensorFlow Lite is a sort of an answer to that. How do we take the most popular operators in the library and make them available on, uh, on these devices? And can we do it such that the compute takes advantage of the device itself and is sped up in some way? Right. Um, Core ML, the, the top right icon there, is another solution that's out there. It's offered by Apple, so you can take, say, Keras model or whatever you happen to be developing in, and port it over to iOS devices pretty straightforwardly. In fact, um, one of my colleagues has a couple of blog posts he's built where he shows you can you can take a model you have trained and put it on your device in under five minutes. Right, it's pretty straightforward. Um, MicroTensor is the other one that recently entered my field of view, which is really interesting. It takes a full on. It supports TensorFlow in full, but sort of tries to do what TensorFlow Lite does while putting more under the hood so you're not having to deal with a lot of the It is, on the other hand, tech, um, targeting even smaller devices. We're talking sub-meg memory devices. Right? So perhaps I want to have um, uh, an audio security system on my door at home. Right? I don't want to give my kids the key, I don't expect that they will do well at you know, retaining that key, but I want to offer them a way, a way to get in my house very easily. I don't need anything other than to be able to authorize them through their voice, right? And with these very tiny devices, do, um, in fact, I've got one that's coming up, I'll just wait until we get to that. Um, some of the devices that are available uh, are the Intel's, our Intel's Neural Compute Stick. This came out, I want to say, about 2014, one of the earliest that I know of in this area. You plug it into your computer, and it offloads the computations related to your model to this device, and this device has been optimized for those computations. So you get your data, you get your model, you, port your, you, you push your model onto this device, and then as you stream data through it, it takes the data, processes, and you do that answer fairly rapidly, right? 
Um, similarly, NVIDIA, more recently, in the last couple of years, has, has come out with the Jetson. Now, they've had a, another um, device that is, the name now is escaping me. I want to say it's in the Jetson series for the last five years or so. Not really intended to do machine learning and deep learning, more targeted for robotics. Um, and this um, has a lot of influence on robotics as well, but this is sort of blending the world of artificial intelligence and, and robotics. Um, another interesting one is the, uh, is the, oh, I didn't update the label there, but excuse me, the Javois um, smart machine. <coughs> Picked this particular image because of the quarters, right? Because of the, the change there gives you a sense of how big it is, but it actually runs TensorFlow. Build yourself a convolutional neural network, do image recognition or object detection or whatnot, and you can port it to this device. So imagine carrying this around on your lapel or whatever. Um, excuse me. Oh, I lost this slide. My apologies. So the, the one I was talking about before is the Smart, it's the Smart Fun Edge development board. This thing is also about the size of the quarter, and will do things like audio recognition or um, perform like weather analysis, what's the temperature, how much rain is happening, these types of things, um, right on this tiny little device. So long as your model doesn't require a lot of compute, this this the Spark Fun Edge development board is really cool. Um, and then what I have here with me today is is Google's Coral, and this is sort of what got me excited. I initially jumped in with my develop with my consultancy firm to help people understand the research is still very bleeding edge, but there's a lot of the research that's ready for us to actually make products or to make them, you know, improve the consumer's lives. Um, and then fast forward a few months and Google announces this board. And as soon as I saw it, I literally, as soon as I saw it, I went and ordered it, right? Um, very fun little machine. It, it's, anybody here familiar with Raspberry Pi? So Raspberry Pi is a small computer, um, the same order size as this, in fact, it's the same shape. Um, and it's in, it was originally intended for uh, making compute available to kids so that they can learn programming or you know, browse the internet or whatever they need to do in school on the, on the um, charge of around 25 bucks. Very, very cheap but very capable computer, nonetheless. This is in that same arena. It's a little more expensive but it has hardware built specifically for doing the computations that you do in machine learning and deep learning, right? So the speeds goes up heavily. In fact, this particular board, while a Raspberry Pi can run independently of the computer and display on a monitor and take keyboard and mouse input, this one can, but is not intended to do so because, it, it's in, because you want to use all of its resources as best you can for the machine learning performance. So it's usually uh, intended to run side by side with another computer somewhere. And that brings me to the teachable demo that I want to show up. I won't spend much time. I, I'm more or less out of time, so I might have to show this after the fact. Um, but let's see if we can let's just see if we can do a couple real quick here. Um, so the point of this is to show off that you know this is an edge device, very low ca ca capabilities. Uh, it's got a um, it's got a gig of memory, four gigs of hard drive space, and then um, a Cortex M4 on the device, right? So I don't want to say it's four cores and not completely 